Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, what we're going to talk about on this episode is we're going to dive into an article that's starting to take notice in the media about the wins that are going in the satisfactory column for the Second Amendment across the entire nation since June. Now, June's an important month. That's when the Bruin decision came in like a wrecking ball and destroyed gun control nationwide. And they're still trying to pick up the pieces in their blue states. My own personal opinion on that, they are in complete defense. We are in complete offense. They are trying to shore up gun control in their blue bastions. And we are going to never let them rest because these gun rights are going to go to the next generation. That's what we're going to talk about. Everything is linked in the description box below. And when the media starts to notice, you know it's been going on for a while. I'm going to say a quick word from our sponsor, Established Titles, and then we're going to dive into it. And I cannot wait to hear what you guys think in the comments field below. The Established Title Packs give you one square foot of dedicated land in an estate in Edelston, Scotland, along with a certified crest like you see right here. This is based on a historic Scottish custom, which will allow landowners to become lords or ladies. And if you act now, you can be in the LOA little plot so we can have our own little fiefdom. This is a fun and novel way to preserve the woodlands of Scotland. They work with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for Our Future to support global reforestation efforts. You could officially change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on your plane tickets and also on your credit cards. This makes a great last minute gift and they have couple packs which you can get adjoining plots of land together. In order to give the ultimate conversation piece for that special someone, Established Titles is running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use the code Langley, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Langley to support the channel now. All right, my brothers and sisters. So as I mentioned in the intro, if the media is starting to notice the wins, you know they've been going on for a while because this is from the Wall Street Journal. Again, it is linked, as I always do, for your review, but let's get it. Judges across U.S. expand gun rights, taking cues from the Supreme Court. First of all, they're not expanding gun rights. They're curtailing gun control. Very important distinction, but I digress. Courts are placing more emphasis on historical traditions, because that's what the Bruin decision said. Presenting new challenges for defending gun regulations. They're not gun regulations, they're gun control. It's a measure of control. Nothing to do with regulation, it's all about control. But let's continue. This article is from the 10th, so this is pretty new, and they're just starting to pick up the momentum. The Supreme Court's decision this year to strengthen Second Amendment protections for carrying concealed weapons is starting to ripple through the lower courts, with several judges citing the ruling to strike down other gun regulations. Again, they're writing this article as if this is new news. You guys have covered this with me twice a day, every single day. But it's cool to zoom out and actually see what has been accomplished since June through October of where we are now in 2022. This article is letting other people know that don't follow it as tightly as we do. There's momentum here. Check this out. Under the new guidance, judges are supposed to focus less on whether gun regulations advance present day government interest. That's end me or means ends testing. That is gone. That is the big thing that's killing the uh, gun controllers. And more, as Justice Clarence Thomas wrote for the court on whether a regulation, quote, is consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. Thus, a firearm restriction implicating the Second Amendment is permissible only if it is similar to how firearms were restricted in the early decades of the Republic. It's the only way that you can read that, and that's the whole point. It's going through the lower courts, and they're about to walk through all the different cases, again, only since June, that we've been rolling on and we've been really fine-tuned. But it's cool to see someone else picking up some of the weight here. Check this out. Several recent rulings highlight the early impact of the Supreme Court's new approach. With judges ruling against gun regulations applying to young adults, we saw that when we covered it, individuals facing felony charges and makers of homemade guns covered both of those. And last week, New York saw a court block enforcement of a new slate of gun rules it enacted in response to the high court's ruling. Also covered that. This is a tapestry of lawsuits going across the board. Everything is being recalibrated. And we're on the W side here. Let's keep going because this is where it starts to list out all the wins. A Texas federal judge in August ruled the Constitution protects the right of 18 to 20 year olds to carry handguns for self-defense outside the home. Yep. In a case now pending before the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Now, ironically, the resistance on this one came from the Texas AG, Ken Paxton, who said, ah, maybe this isn't a good idea. But it still went down. Let's continue. We've got even more. 
In September, U.S. District Judge David Counts of Western Texas applied Justice Thomas's guidance in dismissing federal charges against a man accused of violating a federal law prohibiting people under felony indictment from buying firearms. Indicted, not convicted. Very important. We covered that one. All of these things are relating right back to that Bruin decision. When we talked about it was watershed, this is what we're talking about. Also this past month, a federal judge in Delaware suspended enforcement of a state law criminalizing possession or manufacture of unserialized homemade firearms, citing the Supreme Court's recent decision. That was a massive one because that is going to be duplicated across the nation. Quote, with no evidence of long-standing analogous firearm regulations in the record, such restrictions on so-called ghost guns are likely unconstitutional, U.S. District Judge Mary Ellen Norico wrote. She's dead on. They are unconstitutional because you cannot regulate something that's going to be something. But we've covered that. That's not what this video is about. And here's another one. In last week's New York ruling, U.S. District Judge Glenn T. Sutterby in Syracuse said the state couldn't bar concealed carry permit holders from walking armed into Times Square and other crowded spaces. Absolutely correct. Now, that one's still under heavy litigation. The motion to you know, basically put a stay on the injunction was granted. It's going before three court, uh, a three-judge panel in the Court of Appeals in the Second Circuit, but it is still moving. That did happen. And this last one, this is where they're, they're realizing it's going to go in the end. Check this out. Courts have yet to rule on what the Supreme Court's decision means for a number of high-profile gun regulations, including statewide restrictions on certain semi-automatic rifles labeled assault weapons enacted in California and Maryland. Cases are, of both bans are pending, and those are the big ones. When those start to fall, when you start to see those become closer to a conclusion, you are going to see gun control wither even further on the vine because these unconstitutional actions are getting shown the light of day and they are going away because of the Bruin decision and even the media is realizing the inevitable. That's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.